From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up. What up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan. Corey will be joining us somewhat momentarily. Today's show will be primarily content that we had from Charlotte, interviews with Tamari and Terry, as well as Syracuse quarterback Tommy DeVito. But first, quick little story. On the way back from Charlotte, our guy, five-star Irish O'Fell, is getting lean and mean. He's getting ready to, I don't know, maybe like join the UFC or something, but he's He's getting into fighting shape out there. He's playing racquetball. He's eating really well. We're hungry on the home stretch coming back from Charlotte. And I suggest, hey, why don't we stop at Zaxby's on the way back? We're going to pass through Thomasville. There's a location there. They're a friend of the program. I was like, well, do they have grilled chicken? I'm trying to kind of, you know, eat clean. I'm like, yeah, they got grilled chicken. It's great. You'll love it. So we go. I get the blackened Cajun grilled chicken sandwich with tomato and lettuce and ranch, and I dip it in Zach sauce, and it's amazing. Ira's like, let me get that, but I don't want anything on it. And it's it's a club sandwich, so it also comes with bacon, but your boy doesn't eat bacon. You know that. I don't eat pork. But anyhow, so Ira's like, let me get that, but I don't want any of this stuff. He's like, I don't want cheese on it. I don't want tomato on it. I don't want lettuce on it. Nothing. He just wants a piece of chicken breast on a bun. By the way, my sandwich also had cheese on it. It's delicious. So I'm like, Ira, really? That's that's what you're going to do? Ira was instantly converted. I don't want to speak for him, but I'm going to speak for him right now. Ira couldn't stop talking about how good the chicken sandwich was. And that's because it's so tender and juicy. So you don't even need all the fixings on it. So sometimes I misspeak when I talk about, like, let's load up, let's carb up, let's let's go into bulking season, let's get a box. But, man, there's all sorts of options legitimately on that menu for anybody uh, who's trying to either get in shape, whether that's losing weight, or maybe trying to get a little bulk. Sun's out, gun's out. So here's part one of today's show. It's going to be our interview with Tamari and Terry from ACC Kickoff. Also, programming note, will probably be off until Thursday, in which uh, that episode will most likely have some interviews from other people we spoke to at ACC kickoff, most likely Marvin Wilson. A story on him should be up on War Chant later on Monday. We'll also have Michael Langson on to preview the upcoming Saturday Night Live recruiting event, which is a big deal. Willie and the staff throw out the red carpet, bring a whole bunch of big shot guys in and try to woo them to come to Tallahassee full time. Savelle Smalls, defensive end, five star from Washington State, I think is confirmed to be on the list. So the list is obviously moving. It's fluid. Michael Langston will give us the very latest on that on Thursday. Also check out Warchant.com. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access to the Ultimate Semmel Sports Source. For much more recruiting news from Michael, Ira's got a story about the trouble the big three, Florida State, Florida, and Miami, are having keeping kids in state. Uh, all that's available for our subscribers. If you're not part of the family, it's okay. Use that promo code. If you're a student, email support at warchant.com from your student email address for a promo code that will give you 12 months of access for $12. It's a real thing. We're still doing it. I can't believe it. I'm going to stop talking. Let's go to the interview. All right, the man that we have here needs no introduction, but I'm going to have you introduce yourself because I think I always say your name wrong, and I don't okay. mean to. How do I pronounce your first name? Tamarion Terry slash Gary Terry. Tamarion. Tamarion. Yes, Tamarion. I'm saying it right? Tamarion. Yeah, that's okay. right, right? Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have some fun at the beginning of this. I'm going to ask you some, we're going to go into Bryles tempo mode right here. You got to go quick and you got to go fast, man. Okay. Odell Beckham Jr. or Antonio Brown? Obell. What's your favorite class in school? Like, what's your favorite subject? What's oh. Your favorite class you got at Florida Mouth. State? Okay, right on. Uh, your chicken, do you like it fried or barbecued? Fried. Celebrity crush? Ooh, Rihanna. Okay, oh, nice. that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, if you could pick any two teammates to play in a three-on-three basketball tournament to win it all, who would it be? Uh, well, I say, I say Ham, Hampson, Nisner, and Marvin Wilson. Marvin? Really? Yeah. Huh? So he's down low. Like he's gonna get all the rebounds. Oh right? yeah, he do it all. He, yeah. he, he can move. Okay. <laughs> he can yes, set sir. screens and roll. Oh, all right. Yeah. On an airplane, window or aisle seat? Window. Same here, man. 
Would you rather have a condo on a high rise in the middle of the city or a house on a farm? House on a farm. Okay. Do you have a Coach Dugan's impression? What'd you say? Do you have a Coach <laughs> Dugan's impression? What'd you mean by that? Like, did, does, it, he, does he say a certain thing that always uh, sticks in your mind? Oh, I be mean, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Oh, I can't say it. He be, but he he say some crazy things though. <laughs> how's it been? How's it been uh, playing under him here now for a spring under your belt uh, and what he's kind of brought to the team? Um, it's been very good. You know, you know, Coach, coach Dugan. He a great he a great coach. You know, he don't taught me so much and just he he been like one of them guys that gonna always be that for me and I'm gonna always be that for him and. You know he don't taught me. He taught me so many, so many drills and how to how to flip my hips and how to like my footwork, get my footwork right, and you know coming off the ball, how how pointing the ball and always tucking the ball in and things like that. You know little things like that and how to stay up off of all defenders and stuff like that. So he he taught me so much and and I respect him for that. I respect him so much for that. You're talking to uh, probably the two biggest members of your fan club. We started it last year. I mean, we were all aboard. We were there since day one, man. The Terry trade. One, like, man. this right. guy's the best player on the offense. Let's get him the ball. Um, and you you had a really good season. But what what do you need to improve upon? What what Even with the, the, the success you had last year, what do you have to get better at? Um, I could say, like I said, footwork, um, route running. I want to uh, improve on my route running. You know, it's not bad, but I just feel like I could – I can, I can prove on that like much like much more cuz um just just by like the li just just little things like route running uh footwork um like I said high pointing the ball uh, catching the ball keeping on focusing it in with both of my eyes and keeping on my my eyes on the ball thing little things like that my blocking and, um I want to improve in that just improving the little things like that and that become a long that take me a long way can we get you off the punt team as the gunner oh, I uh, mean holy moly <laughs> uh no I'm a, uh that's that going to be my thing that oh. that receiver and that punt gunner I'm a, I'm going to stay on that punt um, So you like gunner. that Yeah I love it okay. I love to go hit I mean you, I wish I could play oh, defense okay, too Oh okay I got gotcha. you yeah that's that's your <laughs> chance to go hit people yeah. I got gotcha. you all right <laughs> What I'm a little bit nervous about is everyone's going to know who you are now. I'm afraid they're going to get double teamed all the time. It, I mean, um, I'm fine with that because that just opened up for my teammates. Like I said, I, we got a lot of dogs in the receiver on room that people don't know about. And and I, I'm sure, like, y'all going to see that this year. Like, it's, it's going to be a lot of people that going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns and a lot of guys that are going to really um, help help this team out in that receiver group. And, it's just gonna open it up. I know. I know Cam Akers. He gonna run that. He gonna run the ball very well this year. And and it's just gonna. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a great. Great season. Who's the best talker on your team? Best talker. Best talker. Yeah. Best trash talker. Uh, I can say Dante Jackson. Oh, is he? Okay. What about a DB? DB. Uh, yeah, who, Sante Samuels. Oh yeah, he does it a lot, right? Yes. And you bark back at him. Right. How I mean that really is a that can be an important thing go in July and then obviously going into August. How much does that the saying I like to say that, that I coined is iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. So when you're going up against those guys, how much how much better does that make you in uh, in the competitiveness of it all? Mm -hmm. Um, it ma it make me so much better just because uh, you want to shut them up. Yeah, I, I I always tell them like yeah well, I'm gonna give it to you today. I'm gonna um, bring it to you. I hope you're gonna bring it back and. We we just love we love talking um trash to each other you know that's part of our game but end of the day he's still my brother and they still my brothers and we love each other like you know we got the same mom and stuff things like that but uh, we're gonna always talk um smack to each right. other you know coach always tell us talk we we can't we, we gotta have energy in practice and sure. that we bring we always bring the energy at practice and we we gotta have that keep going we gotta keep going with that. How do you not go into the huddle after every play, if y'all huddle, or if you just go back to the quarterback and say, man, throw it to me. I'm, I can run by this guy. Um, and did you do that last year? So? I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I would say, uh, yeah. Like, hey, DeAndre, yeah. I, I can run past this dude. Just oh, yeah. throw it up. I tell him all the time, like, um, I, it don't matter, like, if it, if it's if it's two guys on me. I feel like if it's two guys on me, that, fit, that still feel like it's one-on-one. -on -one. Right. If if, I'm, if if three guys on me, that means somebody open. But if two guys on me, it's one on one. Throw if, it up. If it's one guy on you, isn't that an automatic? Just I, throw it if, to me. If it's one guy on me, that's an automatic touchdown for me. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh at you. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, sir. Tamari and Terry joining us here on Wake Up War Chant. Tamari, you know that freshman year, you and James. Uh, I mean, James kind of got thrust into duty, but leading up to the season, you guys were kind of running with the same unit. 
is there a little bit of a bond there, a chemistry, despite the fact that you know he wasn't the starter last year? Do you do you have a good sort of relationship with him on the football field? Yeah, I got a bond with um, James Blackman. When I came in here my freshman year, you know he was he was um, he was playing after uh, DeAndre, you know DeAndre Francois and stuff like that. So I always went with the tools, and I always went with James Blackman. If, if it wasn't James Blackman, I would, I'll go with Bailey sometimes. But it's always been James Blackman been in the picture with me, and we always been getting that work in. We got that little bun now. Now he know like where I'm gonna go, how I'm gonna run my route, and where I'm supposed to be at. And he put it at the right position at the right time. We keep hearing about how good of a leader he is, but no one wants to talk about how good of a court. I mean, his arm, his accuracy. Do you see the improvement that that needs to be there? So much. I don't saw him improving a lot of things. He was one seventy. He one ninety five now. So. He, he he had proven a lot of things. He worked so hard, and 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 I just love that. Like he he make everybody else want to work 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 as hard as him. Like he put in so much time and so much effort in this game, and and we just love that out of him. Who's a receiver that you try to uh, uh, grow it up? Who was your guy? Do you have a guy now that you try to emulate, that you try to take after? Yeah, I always watch Julio Jones. I always yeah. watch Antonio Brown. Even I used to watch uh, Alden Tate. Like I said, yeah. I, Alden Tate, when he was here at Florida State, you know, we used to always talk. Even though he was in front of me, you know, he always told me what I had to do and what I need to do to um, impact right. my game and things like that. So, you know, I always told him, like, if he mess up on things and that, I know I always told him that what you got to do and stuff like that. So we always had this little bond with me and Alden Tate, and he always told me things that I need to um, impact my game. In. Okay. Tomorrow, and last question for me. I'm not Italian, a talent evaluator, but I was bored the other day. I looked at your your tape on Huddle from when you were in high school. Okay. Second play of the, on your on the tape, you guys fumble, and then some guy starts running it back, and he's got like a 15 yard head start on you. And you track him down 70 yards down the field. All right. You're losing 32 to zero. Right. Um, I don't know how that's not like at least you a four strip star. Him, didn't you strip him of yeah. the ball too? Hold yeah. on, who was losing thirty two to zero? The Green Wave? Oh yeah, they were lo- yeah, they were losing thirty two. I thought you said <laughs> we were losing thirty two to zero. Oh, you guys were winning? Yeah, we won. Was, oh. That was a playoff game. We it won said thirty two to zero that they were that they were beating you guys nah, on we, the scoreboard. Nah, who's the uh who's the away team and we were winning. That was the first playoff game. Uh, we um, right. eliminated them, and then we had. Well, you were hustling on a winning play. That's yeah, yeah. Still, it's still, still a thirty-two point difference. Yeah. So you're doing right. that. We didn't want them to score. I ain't want them to score. Um, it was a big game, and they was talking smack. They was they they had us to lose the game, and we came out and we, we were blowing them out, and and we told each other like we didn't want them to score. And I I did that another play too. I did that on the second round of the playoffs too. Uh, Early in the game, we throw the pick and he tried to run it. He tried to run it back, and I script the ball out again, and we got the ball. My question is though, like, were you ever nervous that, like you weren't gonna get recognized? I mean, you're like the six three kid, two hundred pounds. You run like the wind, but the offers aren't coming in. It's your senior year, and then now you're here in Charlotte representing Florida State. I mean, just how crazy is life sometimes? It's so crazy because I um I always told myself like. I, would, I had like so we had so many um talented players the, coming um turning county and everybody like moved on me and they were trying to m- get me to move to a bigger school because you know no offers weren't coming down there uh, but I I I ended up staying and offers just started coming in started coming in started coming in then I started getting big offers then you know it was a blessing for me and everybody was saying that everybody thought like nobody would never come to a small town like that and just you know recognize somebody as talent you know and and i was blessed with that and i was blessed with florida state came and that when i committed do you miss safety yeah i do a little bit i miss hitting people <laughs> i love to hit so uh i miss that a was little there bit. a chance that you I, I think you said florida recruited you yeah as um yeah florida they recruited me as safety when jimbo offered you and you committed was there any talk of we don't know what position you're going to play yet or was it always wide receiver i mean they had some talks um about me playing defense too and trying to change me around the deep uh, play safety and things like that. I mean, I worked out a little bit at right. Coney and things like that, but um, I stuck the receiver, though. It worked out for you. Yeah. you Tomorrow, well. we've kept you too late, but it's all right because you're really fast. We'll be able to get the next place. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, <laughs> Terry, joining us here on Wake Up Board Champ. Thanks right, for your time, thank y'all. Man. Thanks again to Tamarian. I think I said his name right there. He's going to be the dude. We love him. We own pretty much all the stock on him. We're going to hold it no matter if they double-team him or not. But he'll still find ways to flourish, we're sure. Uh, there's also a full, like, 30-minute interview with Tamorian that's completely different from what you just heard up on Warchant.com, also on our YouTube page, which you should subscribe to. 
uh, as well. That's that's free of charge. That doesn't cost you any money. But uh, Corey did a, a a longer story, sort of on Tamarian and, and what kind of guy he is and. Uh, the expectations for him going to the season. That's up on Warchant.com. Uh, one last interview coming up, but first... The universe is a big place, so you should feel especially lucky you ended up on the same planet with Zaxby's. And right now, we're cooking up our special Cajun Spice Black and Chicken for our Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad. It's an intergalactically delicious taste experience, and you don't have to travel light years to get it. The Cajun Club Sandwich and Black and Blue Salad, only at Zaxby's. You're listening to Wake Up War Chant Low Car Beer for the Seminole Soul. Back to Aslan and Corey. All right, we're back. That was quick. Check out Zaxby's. You'll love it. It's Wake Up War Chant presented by Zaxby's. So we also asked for a couple other folks that were not Florida State related. We got everybody from Florida State. You'll hear Marvin Wilson later this week. You heard Willie last week. You just heard from Terry. We also had Louisville head football coach Scott Satterfield. You'll like him, I think. Most of you folks will like him. I liked him. He seems like a real good dude. Uh, we also spoke to Dino Babers from Syracuse, their head football coach. He's a good guy. Pretty good interview. Worked at Baylor for a few years, in case you didn't know. Worked with Kendall Bryles. Had a couple pretty encouraging things to say about aforementioned Bryles. We'll play that maybe later in the week. Maybe the following week? I don't know, folks. We need to take some time off because it's about to start. Either the first or the second is going to be the first day of camp. Anyhow, we also spoke to Tommy DeVito. He's a quarterback from Syracuse. We asked him some questions. Here it is. Back at it, ACC kickoff, Charlotte, North Carolina. Corey Clark, I'm Aslan Hajavandi. We're joined by Syracuse quarterback. We're projected starting quarterback for the Syracuse Orange, Tommy DeVito. Thanks for taking time out, Tommy. How do you like uh, walking around here talking about football all day? It's Beats awesome. being in class, right? It's awesome, yeah, for sure. It's a different experience. It's cool. I enjoy it. Your first sort of uh, foray into making a, a splash on the national headlines was obviously kind of getting thrust into duty against Florida State and, and helping Syracuse roll out that win. Um, we always hear about backup quarterbacks. You're, you're supposed to prepare like you're the starter and, and all that kind of stuff. And next man up. Like, were you nervous at all when you got thrown in that game, or were you were you practicing that week like you were going to be a starting quarterback? No, I practice every week like that. I've been like that since I was younger. Um, so kind of funny story. It's kind of like high school. So high school, my freshman and sophomore year, I kind of sat behind the senior. Then my junior year, I was able to go. But wait, 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 wait. Was he good, the senior that was in front of you? And I say that, did he go to college? Did he go play at a He went college? to college as an athlete, not as a quarterback. Okay, all right. So, I feel like they could have gotten you on the field. I mean, you're a, big, you're a big-time prospect. You're a lead 11 guy, right? Yeah, I was, yep. So Come my on. first year actually playing high school was junior year. Okay, all right. So it's kind of the same deal. I got in a little time here there, <laughs> sophomore year. So I was good to go junior year. So as far as the aspect of preparing I've always prepared like because anything can happen at any time anybody can go down at any time like it happened not that it wanted to happen but you know anything happened so I'm always prepared for that no matter what and I'm glad I was what was that I always want to put myself in the in the um, in the space of a college athlete after a big win what was that night like after you beat Florida State I think you had three touchdowns in the second half y'all are y'all scored three touchdowns you threw your first career touchdown pass you scored your first career what do you do after a game like that? Is your family in town? Do you go right. to dinner? Do you go to a frat party? Like, what do y'all do? What do you do after that? <laughs> okay, me personally, I'm not really the party person, but oh, okay. my, fam- my family comes to um, all the home games because I'm from New Jersey, so it's only a three, three and a half hour drive. Oh, so that's not bad. They always come to all the home games, and you know, it was awesome to be there with them after the games. If it's a night game, I'll just get dinner with them and then hang out with the guys. And maybe go out for a little while, just hang out, but. Really just enjoy the experience with so your you teammates. So you hung out with the family? Yes. Or you hung, and then you hung out with your teammates? Yep. Okay, yes, that's the way to do it. That's the that's the right play. So w- when you get ready to go into the game, like, are, are you talking to coach, and does the game plan change? Or are there certain no. things you're like, I don't, no? It's no, just, it's kind of just, it happens quick. I'm just kind of standing there, and coach would be like, 13, you're rolling. Like, Florida State, I don't even know if I warmed up before I even went in, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I think I threw maybe one pass before, and then he just threw me in because it kind of just happened quick. But might be better that way, right? That you don't maybe, have time yeah. to think about it too yeah, much? Yeah, definitely not time to think about it. But sometimes it's like you get cold. You warm up, and then you know you're right. not going to start. So you're kind of just sitting around. But, you know, you always got to stay ready. And it was, it was fun. It was a good time. Well, it was like 95 degrees. So I'm oh, sure yeah, you no, it was hot. It was hot. I will never forget that. No, that no AC hot. in that place. There is no AC in the dome. Which crazy. is sponsored by an air conditioning company. Sponsored everybody. by an air yeah. conditioning company. Yep, True crazy. Story. but. Well, y'all should be in good shape, though, I would think. Oh, yeah. Pra- Do you practice there all no. the time? You we don't, don't practice in we there? We don't ever, no. Oh, okay. So, like, when it's not football season or we're not in there, it's always occupied by something else, whether it be 
lacrosse, basketball, soccer. Right. They have like the monster trucks go in there. They have <laughs> they have all these kind of events that go on in there. And uh, we practice in a in another indoor outdoor facility oh, depending okay. on the weather. Syracuse Orange quarterback Tommy DeVito joining us here on Wake Up War Chant. Tommy, you're pretty soft spoken. You say you don't party. How do you? We think of quarterbacks. We think of like hot shot, brash. You got. I mean, how do you lead? What's your sort of style? And, and do you feel um, the, the guys are able to rally around your sort of style and approach? Right. So the way that I always went about it was everybody's different. You can't try to scream or yell at everybody because some kids take it others different ways than others. Some kids you can yell at and they'll actually listen to you. Some kids you yell at you know they'll take it a different way. So you got to kind of pick and choose your battles. Sometimes I just have conversations with people. I'm very I'm a very understanding person or I like to think I am. <laughs> so I like to have conversations. I like to get things figured out now. I'm not a I don't like drama at all. You know if, if there's a problem figure it out on the spot and that's the biggest thing for quarterbacks and receivers is to make sure that our communication is the biggest thing. Did you have a quarterback you grew up idolizing out in New Jersey? Like, are you a Jets fan, a Giants fan? I'm a Steelers fan. Oh, I was, all right. I was, okay. I, was born, I was born into being a Steelers fan. My dad liked Steelers, so I was kind of just born into it. So Roethlisberger then? It. Yeah, but my favorite quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, he no. does that. He, I mean, he's incredible. He's awesome. So what, as a quarterback, and a really good quarterback, you play, you're better than 99% of the quarterbacks on earth to play in a high-level Division One conference. What's the difference between him and other quarterbacks? What does he do? Like, then you watch him that, that is so special. Is it just the anticipation? I mean, I know the arm strength is nuts, but the anticipation? It's anticipation, but it's also how he can throw from different angles. Right. He can make any throw on the field no matter where his feet are set. He's just he's unreal with having the ball pace with the accuracy that he has. Obviously, everybody knows Drew Brees is very accurate, but – he does it when he's moving around in the pocket. His vision is ridiculous, and that's someone that I try to iron my game after. He makes plays. He can extend plays. He's not a run guy first. Like, I don't think I am. He's right. a pass guy first. But if he has to, he can extend the play with his legs. Right. And that's how I like to think about myself, and that's someone that I like to look at my game after. What, what was it like playing high school football, being an Elite 11 guy? And like you said, you don't consider yourself dual threat, but that's kind of, everyone needs to be the, the running threat, dual threat guy, but you've kind of carved out your own sort of path. What's it been like playing quarterback in this day and age and not necessarily maybe being the guy that wants to run the ball at, at the first sign of problems in the pocket? Right, it's different, but I, honestly, I think a lot of my teammates like that better because then they get a chance. You know, a lot of times dual threat guys, they'll want to take over and use their legs instead of letting other guys get the ball. So I think the teammates actually like it better, honestly. But um, I went to Don Bosco Prep in New Jersey, and we ran a pro-style offense. So I'm very used to that as far as getting my playmakers the balls. So that's kind of how I was groomed into being, and... I have no problem with running the football, but I would just rather use my arm first and get them the ball. I didn't realize you went to Bosco, so you you were surrounded by a lot of serious talent yes. there, right? Like that's the school in New Jersey, yes, right, sir. for football. Yes, sir. Who was the best player on your team? Who other than you? Who? How many guys from your team or your class went to college? Right. There was a bunch of guys that went to the, went to different colleges. Um, another guy that was really good was Marcus Valdez. He plays defensive line at Boston College. He actually okay. started a couple games last year. He's doing well there. Um, we had a guy that's a, a year younger than me who's at Ohio State right now. He played all, both offensive line and defensive line for me, but now oh, he's, okay. playing, he's playing at the end over there at Ohio State. So, I mean, we have a bunch of guys that come to the program, and we play a national schedule. My junior year, we played Bishop Gorman, which is Tate Martell, Bo right. Bald, and, right? yep, and all those guys. We played national schedule. We went, to, we went down to um, – American Heritage, and I played against uh, Sir Patrick Sertain yeah, and right. Marco Wilson and all the guys they had on that team. That team was loaded. It was ridiculous. But to be able to compete against those guys in high school made college that much easier for me because I'm already used to that speed of the game. I assume you won most of the games you all played? Or? Yes, sir. I mean, you're playing a national schedule, yeah, though, so that wasn't a joke. Yeah, no, we, we won a majority of the games. All right. Well, good. That's fun. So what was it like? My last question for you was uh, how important do you think last year was for the program? Florida State's kind of in a similar position where they, they're coming off a losing season. I guess when did you know Nick, last year could be a good year and, and it wasn't going to be a, a, another disappointing season? Is that three games in? Is it the Florida State game? I know you think it's going to be good, but when, did you, know this, even starts, when yeah. did you know the team, this team, that team was different? Before the, season, before the season even started, probably during camp, because I saw how my freshman year I saw how camp went in the preseason and all that stuff leading up to the season. And then I saw how last year was leading up to the season. You can tell there's a big difference. Right. People actually wanting it versus saying they wanting it. And you can tell how 
the younger guys were actually pushing the older guys, which made them better. Right. Like me in practice, when I pushed, when I was pushing Eric to be better, he was better. Where in the past, he might not have been pushed as much. Right. Does that make sense? Gotcha. So uh, that's why I'm always hoping for for guys to push me and I push other people because you always want to compete. We used to never compete during practice. We were just compete against the other teams. And now that everyone's actually competing in practice, it makes it that much better. And that's what I think the difference is between this year and the years in the past. Right, okay. Last one for me. I read a story on Syracuse.com. You're, you're a highly organized young man. Like, you have an app. You have, did you, there, you have no, every- I, I don't have an app, but I write it down in my notepad. I have, like, my weeks planned out. I have the same daily schedule. I have the same eating plan. I have everything planned out to the T. But you, and you, but you have it written out. Yeah, I have it written out. I write it out. I write out my day the night before. I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. If I have a crazy busy day, I have to do this, this, that. Like, tomorrow we have a crazy day. We take off after this, <laughs> go back. We have to run in the morning, work out. Whatever, I have to pick one of my friends up from the airport. Then we have, like, lift for life later on in the day. I have to, no, it's a crazy days. You're about to turn 21, though, right? Yes, sir, August 7th. All right, man, congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. that first beer. <laughs> Leo, <season>. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Tommy DeVito, Syracuse Orange quarterback, joining us here on Wake Up War Chant. Thanks for your time, Tommy. Thank, Thank you very much, it. man. Thank Good you. Good luck this season. Thank, Thank you. you. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.